Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into game number two with Jinro and Morrow. It is going to be on Daybreak, so let's go ahead and kick it off. Over here, in the top right-hand position, Elliot. Uh, actually, you know, that's actually really cool. Jinro is like all shadow. It is Jinro. Like, if you look at the thing, normally it's like a generic guy that we see and everything, but that is Jinro. <laughs> Just shade. I did see that. It's awesome. That's, that's pretty sick, man. What do I say about the graphics, people? Ho, not the devil. Thank you, Josh. They're on the na another lever? In the top right corner. They're on the another lever? They are. Okay. They be. They, 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 they be, be on you see another one? level. They be down here. Okay. <laughs> season three. They're all the way up here. All right, now you finally get my reference when I said that. I have no clue what you're talking <laughs> you about. You didn't get it originally, but now you finally do. In the top right, we have a man who's been constantly elevating his play. And a man of self-improvement. His name is Jonathan Walsh. You could also know him as Liquid Jinro. The yellow Terran from Team Liquid. In the bottom left, we have none other than Stefan Anderson, another man from Sweden, the Red Zerg from Mouse Sports CC. And Morrow has really good ZVT win rates. In fact, it's over 60%. And, you know, it's he's a really great player. Can he come back in this series? We'll find out on the map. Of his choice, it is Daybreak. I did the spinny zoom-in thing. I know. I thought you would appreciate that. That was really cool. That was very Star Tail Legend S. Thanks. Or dare I say, legendary. I don't get it. Starts a legend is the observer. Can so you I explain said, a little bit more? That was legendary. Not bad. <laughs> Elliot gives me the word. Not bad. Not bad, Roddy. Not bad. You, yeah. you told that to me straight away. Oh you notice God. how he always says straight away? Andre, you're really good at StarCraft and Smash Bros. and a lot of video games you play, but accents are not one of them, man. Excuse me, I can do an awesome <laughs> Golem accent. No, please don't do it. So please don't do how it. How dare you? No. My Golem accent is probably the best in the world. Oh gosh, the Andy Serkin will really come out of retirement just to. I can do Shang Tsung really well too. You. And if you say otherwise, you deserve a smack in the face. <laughs> Morrow's drone is getting smacked in the face for taking the extractor, and uh, Jinro, of course, uh, he is going for a fast command center without gas originally. Now it's cool because Morrow knows Jinro wants to double gas after that fast command center so that way he can transition to you know his his reactor helium to whatnot and wow look at that morrow he almost actually escaped there if Jinro didn't put up the supply depot he would have gotten out of there pretty cool it does double gas does go down i would have actually preferred him to keep that drone on the extractor i like that a lot yeah, more stall it more because you know your drone is going to die right if if it gets canceled you well, know a, your drone is going to die to say, man. no but look at it this way you lose eight minerals and the drone if you don't cancel it if you do cancel it. If you don't cancel it, you lose 25 minerals and a drone. If you take X over Y. No, 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 shut up. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm it's a 17 mineral difference, and is. you're blocking your opponent from making an extractor yeah. or, or a refiner for quite a long time. Just finish it. 17 minerals, I'd take that. Yeah, and you delay tech that General clearly wants to get out. You can see he's going for reactor helium. This is just a pretty common transition that many Terrans end up doing. And, you know, just like you're saying, I wish he would have stalled it for just a little bit longer, but at the same time, you know, Morrow knows what to expect. He sees, oh, Jinro ended up taking that geyser, so he says double gas. He knows Hellions are coming, and he's getting four queens out, very systematic. A lot of Zergs do this. You can ask anyone. Leenok, Nest, T, DRG, they do all this stuff because it's good to just block your ramp, spread creep, especially on a map like Daybreak where there's two exits mm -hmm. out of your natural, not just one. See how um, Morrow goes to go about this. We do have no gas up yet for Morrow, by the way. Yeah, he's Very pumping out drones. He's going to go up to 36 drones really quickly. Notice all four gases at the same time. So we're probably going to see some sort of double evolution chamber style. Yeah. I and would be surprised if we saw anything else, actually, because I think Infestor Zergling is the best style to actually do on this map. Yeah, Infestor, Infestor Zergling, Zergling Roach. Really I should good. say that. Infestor Zergling Roach. Because Roaches are really important. To keep you safe against the initial Hellions. And then you switch over to mass Zerglings, but we'll see. Hmm. Jinro. Almost so bad. Only making one more Hellion. No, actually, just queued up another one. He was supply blocked, actually. And Jinro finally putting down a third orbital command, or a third command center. You know, maybe he turns out to a planetary, who knows. But uh, Jinro in general loves it on this map specifically. I, again, I watched replays on this map. Jinro goes for that fast orbital, third orbital command and puts on a lot of pressure with Marine Tank. Non-stop, similar to game number one, 
but more so he wants to get a stronger mid-game economy. Now he scouts his third here. Maro uses his first 100 gas for speed, now getting out some roaches to defend. But General has some pretty good information. He sees his third. Now how does a Terran respond to it, uh, especially if they're going for a fast third? We get their own third. That's really yeah. the only way. I mean, there's no big timings that you can do based on the fact that your production is pretty far behind, given that you went the command center instead of going additional barracks. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any big timings that Jinnor can hit. Well, you know, I was specifically kind of, I was baiting the question, because I've seen Jinnor's play in the past, so I kind of knew, I kind of cheated. Uh, but guys, keep in mind, this is live, this isn't replay at all. This is uh No, live you watched this live. replay I watched beforehand. this replay. We just cropped playing out live. this right-hand side. <laughs> It, and, it's uh, a special new program Photoshop to out. make it look like, uh, but look like all this. But Jinro slide. specifically, when he sees this kind of style, he knows you know inevitably Zerg is going to go double upgrades. He goes double upgrades too, really quick. And you can see plus one plus one starting. So he knows you know Zerg wants to usually. He sees a third. He says, okay, Zerg's going to play for the mid game where they get sick upgrades and they do like all these crazy attacks everywhere. He's going to start his upgrades early as yes. well, and I love that. And it's a really cool build. It's really important to do that in TVZ. I mean, if you are behind. Um, well, no. If you're behind, it's terrible. <laughs> if you're behind, well, uh, there, there's get more behind, else. right? Is yeah, that the you saying? get more behind. You get more that's, behind. That's what happens. No, the big thing is that Carapace upgrade. If you have a Carapace upgrade over your Terran opponent, then Ultras have a lot of timing. And I, that sounds weird, right? But when you pop out Ultras with five armor, they have a natural plus one armor. So it's six total armor against, let's say, a plus two attack Terran, well, they're only dealing eight damage. So two damage a shot. So two damage a shot. You have to kill, you have to <laughs> shoot an ultra like 30,000 times if you want to kill one. And then they transfuse. And then they transfuse, <laughs> gain 10,000 health again, and then you have to do that all over again. And uh, the number, you know, Andre, you're the math guy, so I'm going to trust that those numbers were accurate. In the meantime, we do see some interesting numbers popping out here. Plus one, plus one, about to finish from Morrow. But at the same time, Jinro's going to finish out, so he won't have that big advantage. Morrow's going for Spire yet again, so he really wants to utilize his Mutaling Baneling mid-game composition and just do it better in game number two. That's so interesting because I've seen Jinro clean up Mutasiles a lot. Yeah, you know, General's very comprehensive in his defense. He's really good with turret placement. I love mm -hmm. look at it. He's already starting to work. He expects it. He knows it. And Morrow, he's a person with great control in general, so hopefully he can dodge it. And so we'll see a lot of maneuvering with Morrow with Mutalisk like last game. But the big thing is that this time, Morrow uh, has more freedom because Daybreak, the way you expand is more linear. Uh, compared to the way Jinro took a, a third that was kind of in a triangle formation, oh, Jinro can set up traps. That is such intelligent yeah. t intelligence right there. I love what you just said. Thank you. Triangle, yeah. Triangle, delta formation. Delta formation. Like that? Yeah. Change in what? Uh, change in the, the expansion path. Cool. So, Moro. I like that. Moro, uh, well, because delta is also a triangle. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, thank you. You picked up on that. Last time I said that with the Coke, they're like, huh? Delta what? The oh airline? Dude, I, I'm, I'm like, continental. That's a continental formation. As they saw Mutas flying. <laughs> I was like, that's not it at all. Oh, speaking of flying in, we have the Mutas coming in to, and picking up a lot of mules. And that's actually really important mining that Jerome's going to miss. And the Mutas are going to swing around to the natural. Now, <clears throat> a lot of Jinro's turret placements are actually for zoning reasons, not so much for defense. He's trying to um, concentrate on defending via marines than anything else. Mm -hmm. And the main reason for that is because he has double upgrades. 1-1. One, one. Let's yeah. go check the upgrades of these mutas. 0-0. Zero, zero. Plus 1 about to finish. Yeah. yeah, and I do think that 1-1 one, one is actually more than 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> Last time I am I the checked. math guy. I am the math, the math guy. guy. So you guys can trust <laughs> me at home. Okay? I'm, having that, I'm having that moment in Family Guy where where like there's only five <laughs> tickets left and Pierce like, oh, three's been taken. That only means that he does like a huge bunch of lab reports and he's like, this many and he puts out two. So. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I love Family Guy when they're actually good. Uh, that was, those were the days. Those were old school. But. Even even towards then they were getting um, uh, what's the right word for Whoa. bad, bad. That's uh, it. mediocre. They jumped the shark. That's what it was. They jumped the shark. But you know, uh, hopefully they can turn around. I don't know. They're still on the air. Simpson turned around too. They actually had some pretty yeah. good seasons. I agree. Morrow pumped out 17 drones. He is now at 87. And of course, he did see the armory, the plus one, plus one of the of the Marines. And so he only knows that he's going to fall. Or actually, he doesn't have the upgrade advantage. So he's gonna, just going to push in anyways. 
Now he's going to pick off more of these mules, really keeping Jinro from being able to really use his macro mechanic. And as a result, Jinro, actually Jinro's been still been able to keep up in macro. He's the equal in supply pretty much. Um, the income is really bad though. There's just oh, about yeah. a thousand mineral lead for Morrow. And unfortunately, we're 14 minutes into the game and Combat Shield is just about to upgrade, 10 seconds away. Combat Shield is one of the more important upgrades. Oh, unfortunately, a call down supply had to be used over here. So Jinro is supply capped. Yeah. Supply capped as well. The one thing he has going for him, he still has his upgrade. 2 2 is finished. 3 3 can be on the way. He will have the upgrade advantage at that point. Yep. You can see the hive is more than 100 seconds away since the infestation pit yeah. is still in, in progress. Yeah, the infestation pit to get plus 3 plus 3 really quickly and prepared for a uh, hive tech is going to be extremely crucial. 31 banelings in production for Mouse Sports Morrow. Now, the one thing I like is that Marl hasn't lost too many Mews, so he hasn't had to replenish the pack. Because, you know, you need a certain amount of Mews to basically have integrity. Otherwise, Terran could just laugh it off and, you know, leave a few Marines. Oh my. Speaking of Marines, Jinro is moving out here with a lot of them. Yep. Moro, he's maxed out. Oh, no. He needs to siege up because the Banelings are going to oh. hit really nicely. And he's going to go on the Siege Tanks. That isn't the best option, but the Siege Tanks all get mutilated. Mm. And now Mara's just going to keep pushing forward. This is not looking good for Jinro. He yeah, Jinro overstepped his bound. He was on yeah. creep, so it didn't matter that they were clumped up. The Banes could run by anyways. GG. Jinro will tap out, ladies and gentlemen. Mara takes the game. And here comes the incoming Swish graphics. Switch go. And yeah. Stefan Anderson showing really good timing and patience. And it was just, you know, he was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to make a bunch of units max out. He had 87 drones too. He was drone, his drone timing was impeccable that game and was yeah. able to really capitalize on his economy. And you were saying he was jumping ahead of Jinro. And at that moment, Jinro moved out was a uh, time that. I he I was think prepared. that was a weird timing for Jinro to actually move out. He can actually receive the Zerklings, Banelings, Mutus for quite a long time, seeing as his opponent really overmade Mutus. When you see overmade 20 Mutus? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. When you see 20 <laughs> or 30 Mutus, you just say, wait till max out. Yeah. Don't do anything. Why? Because there's two options that can happen. Either you max out, he does a really, really bad engagement. Or excuse me, you don't max out, but you defend. He does a bad engagement because you have the defensive posture, and then you can be cost efficient, counter push. Or the other way is you max out to 200, 200, and 200, 200 against 200, 200 Zergling Baneling Muta is yeah. actually really bad for the Zerg. It's really empty supply. Exactly. There's a lot of empty supply, so mm -hmm. you can normally take advantage of that with great positioning. Your Marines in place. Your siege tank sieged. That would be yes, always great. That would be really good. So I think Jinro kind of misplayed that. He might have been really frustrated with all the pressure that he received mm -hmm. from those, you know, little tiny attacks at the third. But, um, you know, congratulations to Mara for taking game number two. We'll find out who's able to take game number three, the last game of the night. Thank you so much to Kings and HyperX. No, not at last game. Don't forget the uh, Barcraft. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I, uh, what am I talking what about? Yeah, like what am I talking oh about? Man. Thank you so much to King Sniper X. <laughs> they know what they're talking about with all of their technology, SSD, and memory. Check them out at kingsandhyperx.com. That 90 gigabyte SSD. This thing is so handsome. You better keep an eye on it, Andre, or I might take it for myself. Yep. We'll be back after a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. The conclusion of this series was about to happen after this commercial.